Hey, what's going on everyone? It is Foulplay here. We're back for the fifth match of this modern league. Doing another replayed voiceover since my sound recording error uh, had an error um, in this and the two videos prior. Uh, so here we are for the fifth and final match versus Geese. And our hand looks pretty good. Uh, I don't remember if we won the die roll or not here. We did. Okay, this is extremely good on the play. Um, so opponent Misha's bobbled. I think he Misha bobbled him. I think he played his fetch land. Misha's bobbled himself and then fetch shocked. And that was kind of odd behavior from him into thought says. So I, I think in this case taking like, I, I have a read on a shadow deck with Lurus companion and with bobble fetch lands, right. And with thought sees instead of Ioc, uh, I think they actually take the daybreak here, but the most important card is like flying because it gives us our evasion. Um, it's really, really good. So they do take the daybreak. Uh, we draw our second bogle. Uh, it's kind of useless at the moment. So we just make sure we resolve our flying, make sure we resolve our most damage, which is Rancor, start attacking in the air. All right, opponent cracking some lands <laughs> very slowly. Okay, let's let's speed this one up. Plays a Tarmogoyf. Okay, cool. So what are we able to draw now? We draw more mana. Lovely. Uh, so we jam some more damage. We'll drop a creature. We can get a Dried Arbor as well. Um, have a fair bit going on here. So we attack for five in the air. That's one attack of us killing them. So short of them having Assassin's Trophy or Abrupt Decay, uh, we should be able to get there. And yeah, we're on a nice, comfortable 16 currently. It's pretty difficult for our opponent. Um, I think I might actually fetch Dried Arbor here, trying to attack wide because they don't attack at all. And it's like just obvious what they're doing, right? So I'm looking to get that bit of extra damage in, maybe. Off to the side. Um, so yeah, we do exactly that. We draw a Temple Garden. What a rubbish freaking draw. Um, so we'll attack here and we'll get in at least two points of damage wide. And my opponent will go after the Arcane Flight here and easily chump block this. Wait, no. Oh no, they just concede the match. Wow, okay. Um, so they gave like a really hard read on that. Um, but obviously didn't have it. They were just maybe fishing for a bit more information. But I, I don't think we like risk them not having it, right? Um, Alright, so I think this is actually the third discard deck that I've versed in this league as well. Um, after not seeing any discard for like two or three weeks, I versed three of them in one league. And of course, I don't have any Leyline of Sanctities in my list at the moment, and that feels really, really bad. Um, but yeah, Soul Guide Lantern is obviously good against Jund. It deals with their shrinking their Tarmogoyos, at least for a little bit. Um, something like Relic is probably a little bit better than Soul Guide Lantern. So that's that repeatable effect, right? If you get two of them on the table, it's like really, really good. So I'm bringing in Prismatic Ending, presumably for Death Shadow. Um, and looking at taking out some green cards. I'm not sure taking out Rancor is the wisest decision here. All right, so we get this spicy looking seven with no green mana. Um, so yeah, good, good times, good times. We're mulliganing. All right, we see this hand instead. I think I keep ditch a Hyena Umbra, yep. And we're playing around Thoughtsies here as best as we can with our Force Negation. Of course, it's only good for one turn, right? Where Leyline's good for an entire game. Uh, here's the Inquisition instead of the Thought Seas. So we look to counter, ditching the uh, Invisible Stalker. We hit mana, which is actually quite nice. Uh, we should lead on the Hallowed Fountain here instead of the Windswept Teeth. We do. Cool. Um, 
opponent just pass the turn back to us after playing a land as well. That's quite nice of them. Um, see, I don't know if I like that. I think I should spy the Umbra there and attack. I guess I was afraid of Abrupt Decay, but I th think we make our opponent have it. Um, just because we're really low on resources, like we're two cards down on our opponent and one of them, our cards in hand is a land. Uh, if they play like any blocking creature as well, it's going to be really hard to attack from here. So, uh, it sort of looks like they might have the shadow at this point if they're not doing much else. Fetch shocking would, uh, indicate that quite nicely, followed by them playing it. Uh, so they play a Scourge. Oh man, what a blowout. What an absolute blowout for my opponent. That's really unfortunate. So I actually keep the uh, Windswept Heath here uh, into play in case I need Dried Arbor for a sack effect. I like that a lot as opposed to Deck Thinning. We already had the second mana in hand. So uh, attack here. My opponent should block, but if this creature is all they've got that going on, then they're going to be in some trouble. Um, an opponent actually concedes and we get the 3-2. Wow. Um, I'm very surprised to have won that matchup just then. I think it's a bit fortunate. Um, so in my wrap-up, I had a bit of a spit on Prismatic Ending, but I'm pretty sure I just didn't understand the card correctly. Um, maybe I did. Exile, target non-land permanent, if its mana value is... Less than or equal to the number of colors of mana spent to cast this spell. Um, but, like, it's a little bit confusing when you go to cast this on Magic Online. Um, because in this little, like... Uh, where is it hiding? In this little load box here, it says X is equal to zero. Um, so, it, that that sort of makes me think that... It's, it's like targeting a zero power creature, right? Or That's what it may be thought, at least. Um, and I don't think that's the case. So I decided to like ditch it and try for Soul Snare in the next league, which um, uh, it was Francesco, someone in one of the Bogles Facebook groups, was uh, talking about it. Um, it's like not super impressive in my opinion, but it's a card still. Um, and I'm not sure if I look to reintroduce Curious Obsession as a two of or not. Uh, at the moment, I'm also just trying to work Leyline into the list, so I'm just minusing out some things that I haven't seen in a while. Um, or is it a future video? I'd do that. Maybe that was after the stream. I was like, enough's enough. Uh, that must have been the stream when I versed three discard decks and like got my PP slapped. Um, all right, in this one, I was like, yeah, Deafening Silence could do a thing. Uh, any other points? Not really. Um, so that's the list I ended up on here at the end of the league. Um, and yeah, overall it seems like we're still semi-functional in the metagame, even if we're not like super overpowered or anything. But it's there's definitely uh, more and more unfair decks that are doing their thing pretty unopposed at the moment uh which is kind of frustrating power level is getting a little bit wild in my opinion um but that's the that's the way the metagame is going to stay honestly um if they weren't gonna fix all of their like throne of elm drain problems before modern horizons 2 came out then like they were happy with the power level of uh of heliod of amulet titan of of like ponza and everything else like yeah, they're just they're just happy with just like selling cards essentially at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you let me know in the comments below. Um, and if you prefer like this like re-recording over my own videos as opposed to me generally talking as well, uh, let me know about that as well. Um, yep, yeah, have a wonderful day, guys. See you next time.